Today we're diving deep into the complex world of the financial system, particularly focusing on how one company, SoFi, has positioned itself throughout many layers of this system. This vast system, which moves money around this country and across this world, isn't controlled or operated by any single entity. Instead, it consists of a web of institutions, markets, and intermediaries that must play well together to manage money and fulfill transactions between participants in banking, commerce, and investments. We'll explore the intricate layers of this modern financial system and the critical role SoFi and its technology platform plays in it. We'll navigate through various categories, including regulatory bodies, banks, payment processors and gateways, credit card networks, point-of-sale systems, fintech companies, software and hardware infrastructure providers, investment brokerages, and asset managers. As we delve into each category, we'll highlight SoFi's direct operations within them, showcasing how SoFi's acquisitions, Galileo and Technices, have shaped its unique positioning in the financial landscape. Let's begin our journey through the wonderful world of finance. This is going to be a long journey. We're going from top to bottom of the financial system, so there will be many terms thrown your way. Don't worry if it doesn't all stick the first time around. You can always rewind or watch this video again. However, to help you understand how all of the categories of services and layers of systems work together to facilitate transactions and the moving of money throughout our economy, let's start with an example. This should serve as a primer that you can refer back to as we go through each layer of the system later in the video when you have a better understanding of each part. Let's imagine a customer, John, walks into his local store to buy a product, say a new coffee maker. At the cash register, John pulls out his debit card. This card was issued to John when he opened his account with SoFi, a fintech banking provider. By leveraging Galileo's API, SoFi made it possible for John to open this account digitally and receive a physical card. Technesis, the core banking system, is managing John's account, ensuring that his balance is correctly maintained and will be updated after the transaction. John's local store uses a point-of-sale, POS, system, like Square. When John swipes his card, the POS system collects his card information and transmits it to a payment gateway a service that securely sends debit card data from the store to the debit card network. The card network, Visa, MasterCard, etc., receives the information from the payment gateway, confirms the card details with SoFi, and checks if John has enough balance in his account for the purchase. Once the debit card network gets approval from SoFi, it conveys the approval back to the payment gateway, which then tells the POS system to complete the transaction. SoFi with Technicis's core banking service, then adjusts John's account balance. Keep in mind that all of this is happening digitally, with data being transmitted across servers and data centers managed by infrastructure providers. So companies like Google Cloud, Amazon Web Services, or IBM could be playing a role in facilitating this transaction. John receives his receipt, confirming that the payment was successful, and he leaves the store with his new coffee maker. The entire process was seamless and quick, but it involved multiple layers of the financial system working together efficiently. Note that all of this has happened under the oversight of regulatory bodies and central banks, which set the rules and maintain the stability of the economy and its financial system. So, that's an end-to-end -end journey of a financial transaction, from the moment John swipes his SoFi debit card to the approval of the purchase. This example provides a glimpse into the complex and interconnected layers of the modern financial system and how companies like SoFi, with its acquisitions Galileo and Technesis, are playing pivotal roles in this ecosystem. This example used a physical store, but a similar process plays out for online transactions. Now that you have a sense of the system we're dealing with, let's dive into its litany of components and see how SoFi has incorporated itself into many of the layers. Let's start at the ground level, where most of us start our financial lives, retail and commercial banks. These are the institutions most people interact with daily. They accept deposits, make loans, offer credit cards, and provide other financial services. SoFi, a national bank, also provides these services. For instance, SoFi Money is a cash management account, offering high-yield checking and savings accounts to millions of customers. They also offer personal loans, home loans, and even SoFi-branded debit and credit cards. SoFi is able to offer these services while accepting and holding customer deposits due to its status as a nationally chartered bank, 
which requires strict regulatory oversight, but also allows for a wide range of financial services so long as they are in compliance. Next, we have investment banks and brokerages. These institutions focus on securities and investments. They provide services to corporations, such as helping them raise capital through issuing securities, facilitating mergers and acquisitions, and offering financial advisory services. On the retail side, they allow individual investors to buy and sell securities like stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. SoFi operates in this space through SoFi Invest, which allows users to buy and sell stocks, ETFs, and cryptocurrencies. They offer both active investing, where you choose your own investments, and automated investing, where SoFi creates and manages a diversified portfolio for you. This platform puts SoFi in competition with other online brokerages, such as Robinhood and E-Trade. The ability to integrate these services with their banking and lending services is a key part of SoFi's financial services productivity loop strategy, which we've covered extensively in another video. If you're an investor in SoFi or other banks, you should definitely take the time to watch that deep dive. But don't go yet. Let's finish this one first. Okay, let's move on to the financial services and infrastructure providers. Payment processors, gateways, and card networks are critical components of the financial system. They make it possible for businesses to accept debit and credit card payments, both online and in person. Processors communicate between the merchant, the card network, like Visa or MasterCard, and the banks to confirm whether a transaction is valid and enough funds are available. Gateways are the technology that transfers transaction data from the merchant to the processor. This is especially important for online transactions. SoFi entered this sphere with its acquisition of Galileo. Galileo's powerful payment processing platform enables SoFi to handle transactions for its customers. It also allows SoFi to issue its own cards, bringing another key financial service in-house. And keep in mind that everything Galileo enables for SoFi, it also enables for SoFi's competitors such as Chime and Robinhood. Closer to the consumer, we have the point-of-sale systems. Point-of-sale or POS systems are the physical tools businesses use to complete a sale. They accept payment from the customer, update the inventory, and often provide additional business management tools. Companies like Square provide both the hardware and software for POS systems and integrate with payment processors to complete transactions. While SoFi doesn't directly provide POS systems, their financial products, particularly card issuance, lending and payment processing, indirectly support businesses that use POS systems. For example, a business might use a SoFi loan to purchase new POS hardware or use Galileo's payment processing to handle transactions. A business may even use Galileo to issue prepay cards for customers to purchase and those cards may then be used in another business's point-of-sale system to complete another unrelated transaction. Of course, those are only a few examples, but there are many more services offered by SoFi's tech platform that eventually interface with point-of-sale systems around the world. By this point, you're probably wondering where all this money goes and who's keeping track of this web of transactions. You're in luck because I have the answers. Just sit back, listen, and try not to fall asleep because we're getting into the low levels of the financial system. It's far from the most exciting stuff, but it's necessary. So, here's how banks run. At the heart of the financial system, core banking services form the backbone of a bank's operations, enabling the execution of essential banking activities. Core banking services are the engine that powers a bank's operations. In essence, a core banking system is a software that supports banks in managing transactions and accounts, allowing customers to perform basic banking transactions across all branches of a bank, online and in person. This includes services like opening and managing accounts, depositing and withdrawing funds, processing and managing loans, interest calculations, managing customer information, transaction processing, ledger maintenance, and other essential banking functions. Core banking systems are typically built on complex, secure software platforms that can handle vast amounts of data and transactions. Let's consider Technisys, a leading provider of next-generation core banking solutions and a part of SoFi's ecosystem. Technisys offers a platform known as CyberBank, which enables banks to create and manage innovative financial products. For instance, a bank can design a unique savings account with specific interest rates and withdrawal conditions using this platform. Banks, neobanks, challenger banks, and fintech companies such as HSBC and Tab Bank, all rely on this SoFi core banking platform. 
The flexibility of the platform allows a customer like SoFi to tailor its banking products to its customers' needs, providing a more personalized banking experience. Additionally, Technosys ensures that these services are compliant with regulations, secure, and seamlessly integrated with other parts of the financial system, such as payment processors and fintech applications. Core banking systems like Technosys are vital to the smooth functioning of the financial system. They ensure that customer transactions are processed efficiently, securely, and in compliance with regulatory standards. As such, they play a crucial role in maintaining the integrity and reliability of the financial system. SoFi's acquisition of Technosys has brought this critical infrastructure in-house, leading to efficiencies across its business and user experiences. Okay, we're getting to the juicy parts. Let's talk about the increasingly present financial technology companies otherwise known as fintechs. Fintech companies have revolutionized the financial landscape, employing technology to enhance services such as payments, lending, investing, insurance, personal finance, high-yield saving and checking accounts, and notably, innovative models like Buy Now Pay Later, BNPL services. In this ecosystem, SoFi stands out, not only as a provider of diverse financial services, but also as an enabler for other fintech firms through its technology platforms, Galileo and Technisys. Galileo, an integral part of SoFi's infrastructure, provides powerful APIs for crucial banking operations. These APIs facilitate a range of services including account creation, card issuance, transaction processing, and identity verification. Moreover, Galileo's technology plays a key role in the electronic transfer of funds, supporting ACH and wire transfers, both of which are critical to the seamless operation of modern financial services. An exciting innovation that Galileo supports is the Buy Now Pay Later service. It's a new take on financing that allows consumers to purchase goods immediately and pay over time, providing a flexible alternative to traditional credit cards. Galileo's infrastructure enables fintech firms to seamlessly manage these BNPL transactions from the point of sale to the processing of installment payments. In tandem with Galileo, Technosys strengthens the financial operations by taking care of the core banking functions. This ensures that the services facilitated by Galileo are underpinned by a robust, secure, and compliant banking system. Fintech firms like Chime, Dave, Moneylion, TransferWise, and Robinhood leverage both Galileo and Technosys for their operations. They benefit from the integration of front-end services and back-end banking functions, which leads to enhanced efficiency, reliability, and compliance with financial regulations. All in all, SoFi's integration of Galileo and Technosys is a boon to the fintech industry, promoting innovation and enhancing the efficiency of financial services. The comprehensive suite of services they facilitate, including BNPL, testifies to their instrumental role in shaping the future of fintech and banking generally. Beneath the layers of banks and fintech companies lie the infrastructure providers, the unsung heroes of the financial system. These include companies that provide physical infrastructure like data centers and servers, as well as digital infrastructure such as cloud services and APIs. Infrastructure providers form the backbone of the financial system. These companies provide the physical and digital frameworks that support the operations of banks, point-of-sale services, payment processors, fintech companies, and other financial institutions. Like me, you're probably thinking that all of this sounds very similar to what the core banking services provide. However, there are key differences. These infrastructure providers are distinct from core banking service providers in that they cater to the broader information technology infrastructure needs rather than focusing exclusively on banking-specific functionalities. Infrastructure providers deliver hardware and software services that support a wide range of industries, not just financial services. Physical infrastructure providers offer the hardware. These are data centers and servers that store and process vast amounts of data. The security and reliability of these facilities are paramount given the sensitive nature of the data they handle. Companies like IBM and Equinix have dominated this space for a long time. Digital infrastructure providers, on the other hand, provide the software. These encompass cloud services and APIs, application programming interfaces. Companies like Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, and Microsoft Azure provide scalable, secure cloud environments. Interestingly, each of the cloud providers named here are proudly customers of Equinix. I guess another name for the cloud 
is Equinix Interconnected Physical and Digital Data Centers. That doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, so cloud it is. These cloud platforms host applications, manage data, and offer advanced services like machine learning and analytics, serving a diverse range of industries beyond finance. Now, back to finance infrastructure we go. Financial APIs, provided by companies like Plaid and Galileo, allow different software applications to communicate and interact. Plaid's APIs, for example, connect fintech apps with users' bank accounts, enabling them to read transaction data or initiate payments. In the context of SoFi, Galileo, a digital infrastructure provider, offers APIs that power essential banking operations. To be clear, Unlike a core banking system, Galileo's services focus on facilitating the connection and communication between different financial systems rather than managing internal banking processes. Other companies that provide digital finance infrastructure include PayPal, Stripe, and Square. Despite some overlap, each of these companies have a unique focus in the infrastructure market, and some of them interface directly with end consumers, providing them access to the rest of the deep web that is the national and international financial system. On the other hand, core banking providers, like Technosys, focus on banking-specific operations. As we covered earlier, they provide the software that enables banks to manage transactions and accounts, process loans, and ensure regulatory compliance. While infrastructure companies provide the general IT backbone that enables the entire system, Core banking providers handle the specific functionalities that a bank needs to serve its customers and provide the final resting place of money, before and after it moves through the system. In essence, while there is some overlap, infrastructure providers ensure the broader IT infrastructure is robust and secure, while core banking service providers focus on the specific software and systems needed to run banking operations. Both are crucial, working in tandem to ensure the smooth, seamless, and efficient running of the financial system. Last but not least, we have regulatory authorities. These entities, like the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, OCC, in the United States, enforce regulations to ensure the stability and integrity of the financial system. Other players include the Federal Reserve, the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, the Federal Trade Commission, FTC, and the Internal Revenue Service, IRS. As a nationally chartered bank, SoFi is subject to the regulations of the OCC and other financial regulators. These regulations cover everything from capital requirements to consumer protection, and compliance is crucial for SoFi's operations. You made it to the end. You now understand more about the financial system in which you participate than 99% of the country. You deserve all the cookies, really. As we wrap up, it's clear that SoFi's strategy is one of vertical integration, controlling and operating directly in as many layers of the financial system as they can. This could result in better services for their customers as they can streamline operations, cut out middlemen, and create a more seamless user experience at lower costs for SoFi and their millions of customers worldwide. The potential implications of this strategy for SoFi's future growth and for the financial industry as a whole are substantial and worth keeping an eye on. As for the rest of the industry, as an investor, it's important to understand the key parts of the financial system, how they all play together, and the companies and regulators that enable it to function as is expected by the end consumers, the participants in banking, commerce, and financial marketplaces. Well, that's all for today. You've been watching BullAcademy.org. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the financial system and SoFi's place within it. This video has been brought to you by our wonderful patrons at patreon.bullacademy.org who support this channel financially. We'd love for you to join us in our Discord chat and help us grow the Academy together. As always, if you enjoyed this video, it's your sworn duty to hit the like button and subscribe for more. Comment your kind thoughts, or put me on blast for something I got wrong, whichever makes you feel better. In the end, I love you for watching. Stay bullish and I'll see you again in the next one.